So in this video, I wanted to show some uh, extreme overclocking uh, modifications for the Radeon 5870. So as you can see, uh, this particular card is the MSI Lightning version of the card. And I just wanted to show this because uh, the Lightning card comes from MSI with a upgraded VRM, which is really nice. But more importantly, for overclocking of this particular series, uh, MSI went ahead and added a bunch of uh, capacitors here. And you can see those here and here. Um, the reference cards don't have these, so what most people end up doing is just cap modding it themselves. But it's kind of nice that MSI added these. So the first modification would probably be the GPU. But actually on this card, um, we have full control over the uh, voltage for the core. If you use Afterburner Extreme, it's something like 1.7 volts. So there's no real point of volt modding the core. So the next uh, most obvious mod to do would be the memory. So right here is the memory voltage controller. And if you look right here, that is the um, feedback for the controller. So that is just carried over to ground with a 2K potentiometer right here. Um, something odd with this particular card. I didn't get any benefits from modding the uh, voltage for the memory. So stock is better and this mod is pretty much pointless so you don't really need to do this mod um, at least in my experience with this card um, you know every card is different next up would be the VDDCI so that's a voltage rail that controls the um, think of it like uncore for a CPU uh, it basically controls the the data between the memory and the core so the communication so this one's a bit more complicated, but basically what you're going to do is these two sets of three pads here, there's going to be these things here are going to be on here, but they're going to be up here. So you're just going to take those off and these top two resistors, one right here and one right here, you're going to take those off as well. And what you want to do is you're just going to put a wire, the one, two, three, fourth from the bottom on the same row that you took off the two resistors. So put a wire there, right there, all the way to ground. Uh, again, 2K, that should give you about 20% extra voltage. Um, the thing about this rail um, on this particular card it is drawn from PCIe, so you don't really want to increase it too much. Probably 1.35, 1.3 volts. Uh, maybe 1.4 if you're feeling uh, daring. But the, the thing is, you might mess up your PCIe slot if you put too much uh, voltage or amperage through it. And nobody likes a messed up PCIe slot. So, uh, in my experience with this card, the memory overclocking kind of sucked stock. I only got about 120 megahertz, which isn't so bad. Um, but like I said, increasing voltage didn't help. So this is VDDCI. Um, so I increased this to 1.3 and I was able to get about 1400 megahertz on the memory so that jumped up quite a bit so almost a uh, hundred percent increase from not doing this mod so this is definitely probably your number one modification if you're only gonna do one do that one um, the next two modifications here are a little bit more complicated well, in that they're a little bit different. So for Ant, this card, there are two spots 
that monitor current. There is the total card. So the amount of current the total card is using. Um, so that would be this one here. So you can see that wire there is soldered onto that resistor. And again, it's just pulled back on a 2K resistor back here, right here, to ground. Something to keep in mind, uh, before doing this mod, I wasn't hitting any OCP issues at all. Um, I think that's a BIOS uh, setting because this is a lightning car. It comes with a different BIOS modification than say a reference. But I wasn't having any issues at all. But you can be safe and do this mod if you want. It's not strictly necessary. I was pushing 1.5 volts to the core. Um, so you're probably not gonna run into any OCP issues. Um, this fourth mod here does basically the same thing, but the way current is measured on this card is a little bit different than say NVIDIA's method. So it measures total card current draw and it measures current draw per phase. So each one of these phases here, um, it may look like there's like a, a ton of them. Um, I think MSI says there's 14 or 12 phases. I can't remember. I think it's 14 phases, they say. Um, but if we look on the back, we have some doublers. So I don't know. I didn't take the time to actually bother to figure out how this thing was wired up because it doesn't really matter for this card. The VRM is complete overkill. But nonetheless, it does measure per VRM phase how much current each phase is pulling. And OCP will trigger if uh, the limit is exceeded, even on one phase. So this modification here addresses that issue. Right there, we can see that that pin there soldered, again, a 2K resistor to ground. And that'll give you about two to three amps per phase more current. Again, I was never hitting any sort of OCP limit with this card. So if you were to do just one modification, because uh, Afterburner has complete control of this card, um, oh, as far as GPU core is concerned, I would just do the VDDCI mod. So this one right here. And honestly, that's the single best mod uh, you can do for this card. Uh, because it's a lightning, uh, the VRM is souped up and MSI did add a lot of filtering on this card. So there's no need for any sort of cap modding or attaching a power board or any of those things you would normally do with uh, an older card like this. Like I said, of the modifications, this VDDCI was the number one thing. I will say that the memory did not overclock very well to begin with, um, even compared to reference cards. Um, this is Samsung memory on here, so I don't know what the deal is. I guess it's just uh, kind of bad ICs. Um, but yeah, this uh, VDDCI really helped more than I thought it would. So yeah, that's been uh, modding a 5870. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Until next time.